All right, so welcome. Um, so we're going to try and create um, a rainy scene for this our environment. So I'm just going to first start with the reference. Um, so I collected a bunch of references here. So I cr collected all of this. And um, looking at it, I think let's go with this first one. OK, so we'll go with this first one and then we're going to try and match this with the rainy scene. OK, so the first thing we're going to do, we just make it in lit mode now. So I have just a basic directional light and then I'll just go into the environment light mixer. And then I'm just going to add the skylight, sky atmosphere, I don't need a cloud and then the height fog. So we have a basic um, um, light system here. All right, so let's try and match this. Uh, the first thing we're just going to go into the fog, exponential height fog and just tone it down a bit. Right. And then we're just going to switch on the volumetric fog. All right. And um, yeah, let's go into the sky atmosphere and let's increase the mirror scattering scale. So let's make it a bit of an overcast. All right. Uh, we can make it darker with the absorption. And um, the height fog contribution, we can reduce it slightly. And the error perspective contribution as well. All right, uh, let's go back to the height fog and in the volumetric uh, fog, we can in increase the extinction scale slightly and we can tint it to make it blue. All right, let's go back up to the fog um, sky, at uh, sky atmosphere ambient contribution and tint it as well. All right, so we have something slightly similar. And um, we can go to, um, into this plugin I bought lens and film post process and just tweak the colors of the green slightly. Um, so we go into the color adjustments, just switch it on and in the yellows. I can just play with the yellows a bit and the greens so we can feel like we have in similar values. OK, um, maybe I can tone down my exposure contribution compensation slightly. All right, and um, increase a height fall off, increase the fog, right? All right, so we can have a similar tone. All right, so let's say we have this now, and um, we want to make this scene a rainy scene. Uh, the first thing I would do is uh, I'll use the plugin called Ultra Dynamic Sky. So this is the plugin. You also have an alternative called uh, Sky Creator. They do this similar thing, um, but I've been using Ultra Dynamic Sky for a much longer time, so I'm more used to the system. So it's my choice. All right. So uh, if you love it, get it. It's a really great plugin. So I've already bought it, so it's in here. So when you download it, it comes in here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the plugins. And um, let's just switch off the forest for now. All right, uh, let me switch off my forest and let me bring down my exposure compensation. So um, let's go into the blueprints and then I'm just going to drag the sky here. I'm just going to drag the weather in here. So you notice it starts raining when you drag it in. All right, the first thing I'm just going to switch this off because we've already set up our sky already. So we're not going to be using this ultra enemy sky, but we need the two systems for the, for the whole plugin to work. So I'm just going to switch it off and then I'm just going to hide. Make it hidden, hidden in game. So it doesn't have any effect in our game. OK, and then we just have the sky system working. All right. So if we come here now, we notice that, um, yeah, we have the raindrops falling and hitting the landscape. And we notice that the surface of the building is not um, getting wet. Why is that? We need to activate it within the within the blueprint. So since I'm using the Kitbash um, cargo kit, um, each of these um, materials are made using one master material. So it's very efficient. So we're going to tweak the master material to, to make it wet. So we're just going to select the model. And then we just go to any of these models. Let's go to this one and any of these materials. And then let's go to the master material. Right. So now we're in the master material. So if you get this plugin Ultra Dynamics Guy, you get have access to uh, a new node here called uh, Wet Weather Effects. So I just 
switch that on and bring it here. So first thing, we have to look at these nodes where they are going. So we're going to interrupt them here and then pass them out here. So for the base color, I'm just going to put a block here and then just connect it to the base color for the roughness, which is here. I'm just going to in interrupt it here and connect it to the roughness. And uh, for we need the normal map, so I can interrupt it here and connect this to the normal map. All right. So we can connect this one now, base color to base color, roughness to roughness, and normal to normal. So basically, we just piped in this directly here and out here, and here directly here and out here. Same thing with this one. So I'm just using this to make it easy to arrange, arrange my palette. It has no effect. It's just for organizing my nodes. All right. So now that we have this, the first, next thing we're going to do, we're going to want to have dripping effects on the side of the of our structure. So we want um, the water to be dripping down the body. So I'm just going to add a static bool. Uh, that's a boolean parameter. And then I'm just going to pipe it in to the dripping effect. All right. SB means a static bool. SB, if you see anything SB here, that's a static bool. S means um, is a scalar parameter. V3 means is a vector three parameter. This is also this a vector two parameter. V3 is a vector three. SB scalar and um, static bool parameter. So SB static bool V3 vector three. S is a scalar. Okay. So for dripping, we're gonna say yes. So we want it to be dripping, and then for we also need the wetness mask. So it's a scalar parameter. So I'm just Going to type scalar or you or use the shortcut s and press on the on the on the node viewport all right so i have it here i can just rename it so we can just say wetness and this is going to be the wetness and we're just going to mask wetness here and then we're going to make it one all right so we have um, set up the node network for our wetness so once I save, all right, and I close this and I close this. So you notice all our objects now are getting wet. So if we go back to our position, we notice that everything now is very wet, all right? So I already did that for, for my, my jungle scene already. So if we bring back our jungle and we increase the exposure back to four, where it was, you notice that, wow, our whole scene now has gotten wet. All right, so this is how you set up your wetness for your forest and just uh, tweak the master materials on each of your object and just um, fix that in there and it should be working. Um, in the plugin, you can watch um, the tutorials here on how to work with, um, with this plugin. It's actually a very good plugin. You can go into the documentations as well and see how it works. Okay. So uh, now I'm going to show you how to do the dripping effects on the, um, from the roof. So uh, we notice that, okay, now we have this happening. Uh, we see uh, collisions from the raindrops falling, but we notice that some of the objects are not getting collisions as well. So we notice here the rain is dropping, but it's not dropping on the stairs. So why is that? The reason is because we don't have any collision on this object. So we can just um, try to fix that now. So I'm going to double click on the object, just go to the static mesh parameters in the object, and I'll just search for collision. And um, yeah, let's just make this complex as simple. I think I already did that already. So hopefully it's fixed by default. Um, so I think it's just the stairs we haven't fixed. So let's go to the stairs and then we just type collision and uh, use complex as simple and save. And if we check now, we're having collisions on the steps. So the rains are not dropping on the steps. Okay. So let's have the dripping effects that I had in my last video on the edge here. So in the plugin, you can go in here to the weather effects. 
and you have extra plugins here you go through the documentation you see what all of them do but this is the one i want rain drip spline so what i'm going to go i'm just going to go to the top here just going to drag out the blueprint right so already you notice something is happening so let's just drag it up and you notice that wow we have a spline and it's it's already dripping so i can just uh arrange it in a way that creates the illusion like we're having a dripping effect coming from the ceiling okay. so let's we're holding alt and dragging to create this spline effect all right so let's hold alt and drag and alt and drag i'll just do it again let's just alt and drag i'm so bad at drawings <laughs> at drawing splines uh sorry for this i'll just do that uh, again and alt and drag anyway so you get uh the gist i'm i'm really bad at drawing splines but yeah, you can always adjust them after the fact to just um, have them in the right position that you need them. All right. So something like this. And um, let's put this also in the right place. All right. So now if you if you check this out, you have um, um, rain dripping down from the splines. Okay. This is a very precise processor. It's uh, quite finicky for me. And uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, hopefully you get the gist of what I'm trying to talk about. But yeah, this is how you will create a dripping effect with rain. So, so if you look at it now, it kind of creates the illusion like we have rain dripping from the roof of that building. And the cool thing about this um, ultra dynamic sky system is if you come back to the weather system, you can actually go back to clear and the whole scene becomes clear and um, all the particles of rain stop all right but if you go back to rain all the rain effects start again and you have um, the rain particles dripping all right so uh, that's how you do it um, just one more trick i'd like to show you when you go to the weather effects um, and you type here particles all right you can switch off your rain particles but this one will still be there so in my previous um, tutorial what i did was um, i switched off uh, my rain particles and i actually comped um, footage of rain particles so um, because what i noticed was uh, the particles that come with the, with the engine are really not super realistic so um, if you switch this on they look fine for if you're playing a game like this particles dripping but when you um want to do like a cinematic they don't actually look too great so i just left that there and i went to i went online to video hive and i bought uh this rain particles all right so you can find them here you can find uh rain particles like this and um, i comped them in using uh, davinci um, resolve so that is how you create your rain particles within unreal engine um, it's a really really cool process to create rain in unreal and i uh, hope you learned something today and uh, talk to you later